Hey, how's it going, YouTube? This is Eric Abroad. Mira san, konnichiwa. Eric Abroad という YouTube チャンネルのポッドキャストへようこそ。えー、もちろんこのポッドキャストでは僕はアメリカ人なので主に英語で喋りますが、えー、もし、あのー、英語を勉強してる日本人だったらこのビデオを見て聞いてくれてありがとうございます。よろしくお願いします。では、始めましょう。えー、Hey, how's it going, everyone? It is February 20th, 2017. Welcome to the Eric A Broadcast for, I don't know, for this week. Yeah. <laughs> Without further ado, let's get it started.、Um, I'm in a great mood today. Uh, today, um, we're going to be discussing something related to、uh, specifically with learning Japanese in relation to more specifically the kanji, which are the Chinese really difficult chicken scratch characters that are required for Japanese、uh, language learning if you'd like to go into anywhere above intermediate level. Uh, kanji is absolutely required. <clears throat> and、um, we're going to be discussing that a little bit today and how、uh, it can be a little bit daunting, how it can sometimes hold you back. But there's some things that I've realized recently,、uh, lately in my own studies, that I would like to share. So we'll get to that in a little bit.、Um, yeah, I'm in a great mood today.、Uh, I, let me think. This last weekend,、um, on Friday, I went up to the mountain to go snowboarding,、uh, specifically Mount Hood. I went to Timberline, which is a.、Uh, in Oregon, we have a Mount Hood, which has basically three different areas you can go to, and Timberline is the highest one. Um, so, usually people pick between which ones that they like. I'm a huge fan of Timberline, and、um, I haven't been snowboarding in general in over two years, but I haven't been in, up to Timberline in a long time. And oh man, the weather was predicted to be no snow, typical weather. We got up there, and some clouds blew away, and it was seriously like probably, it actually, I think it was the best day I've ever had at Timberline in my life.、Um, Probably top three snowboarding days in my life. I've debatably had some better ones in Canada at、uh, Mount Whistler. I used to go there every year. I'd like to continue that. I want to get that going again because snowboarding at Mount Whistler is insane. And on Timberline, if, you, if any of you follow me on Snapchat or Instagram,、uh, you will have seen a few of the posts from there because I was, I was taking videos the whole time because it was just so much fun. We seriously had, like, if you went into the Uh, areas that were like roped off, like don't go past here, or if you do, you know, enter at your own risk. If you're careful and you're safe, you know, it's usually fine. And we went out there and it was literally like untouched open plains of powder. And we, we just went out there and it's, it's, you can just lean back on your back foot and just, and the scenery is just unbelievable from up there. I forget sometimes, I live in Oregon, but we have some of the greatest scenery and、um, just nature and hiking and all that jazz. Out here in Oregon, and it's really great. And that's why summers in Oregon are awesome. But in the winter, the snowboarding is actually pretty good when the snow is good. So I had a great time. That was Friday night. Last night, I met up with a friend. I was actually supposed to get a haircut,、uh, a friend of mine who works at a hair salon. We were going to meet, get a haircut, and then go out for drinks.、Uh, we met, and he was like, he, <laughs> he asked me, like, in all, like, in very, like, in a very sin sin sincere way,、uh, he was like, Eric, man, I've been working all day. Can we just go drink? And I'll, I'll cut your hair to, like, later this week. <laughs> So, I'm, I'm wearing a beanie today because I didn't really want to like shower and get all my hair done and stuff, or you know, whatever. It sounds weird to say, but I have to get my hair done sometimes. It's kind of a pain. And、um, yeah, so we went out last night, had drinks,、uh, but equally drank water, so we're not hungover or anything.、Um, and I had a great night. So, I woke up today.、Uh, I actually got up early today to go. If you saw on my Instagram, I went to the Nike employee store, which, for those who don't know, Nike is actually from Oregon. I believe it's specifically from Beaverton, which is technically the apartment that I'm living in right now. I'm going to be moving back downtown、uh, next month, but because it's so close, I had asked、uh, any friends I know. Basically, if you work at Nike, you have access to what's called the employee store or the company store, and anything inside that store is more or less half off. Some items are like 40%, but everything's on sale. It's like crazy deals. But it's really hard to get into if you don't work there. So I luckily have a friend who worked there and was able to、uh, let me in. So shout outs to my friend Jake. And I picked out some gear. So I got my,、uh, these are my new pajama clothes, some、uh, Nike SB. I like it. And I'm、uh, feeling nice and comfortable. I also got some、uh, little sweatpants or I don't know what you call them, like、uh, just like joggers or whatever. But、uh, Nike, you know,、um, 
I think I can only afford to buy it when it's half off. And even then, it's still pretty expensive. I, I had to put that on the credit card today, and it was like, oh, my God. Like, <laughs> it still stacks up. So I got some shoes and some other stuff, and that was fun. So I woke up to that, uh, came home, and was going to start some homework. But instead, I got distracted, made lunch, and started doing this instead. So after this is done, I'm going to hop on some homework. And then tomorrow is also homework day as normal. And that's the story of my boring life. Um, actually, well, I don't want to say boring. I just hope it's not boring you. I'm not boring you. I always just talk about like my everyday little things. But that's my day and uh, how my weekend's going. So I'm in a great mood. How are you guys doing? Uh, how are your weekends going? How is school going? <coughs> uh, yeah, like I mentioned, I uh, wanted to discuss a bit today, I guess, uh, in relation to Japanese studies specifically, um, something that... I've just been thinking about a lot lately. And again, with these podcasts, I, I think I realize something new like almost every week. So I'm kind of learning along with you guys, uh, just re more realizing things, I guess, um, in patterns and things that I recognize studying mostly alone right now. You know, as even though there's classmates and teachers and people that I could consolidate, I'm more or less studying on my own. Um, I'm in class, but, you know, like outside of class, more or less studying on my own. Um, and I always just realized, you know, little things, um, that I think work, uh, things that to keep yourself, you know, mentally, not just motivated, but mentally like healthy, I guess. I don't really know. Again, my analogy is really bad, but basically like just how to study efficiently, I guess, and how to study. Cause every, every case is different. Um, any class you take, the textbooks can always be different. You might be living in a different country where Japanese isn't as easily spoken. Uh, it's not very well, very much spoken in America, but I still have opportunities that I can use it from time to time. Uh, my roommate's also Japanese, so that's pretty nice. Um, so I guess, yeah, let's just go ahead and dive into it. I suppose um, this only applies to people studying Japanese, really. So, But again, you guys might find it interesting. So um, I think what really got me thinking about this was this semester... All right, let's let's backtrack to the beginning of this semester. Uh, it was January. New Year's had just ended. I just got back from a trip from New York. Had a great time. And this the term's about to start. And I looked at our criteria for like in the syllabus of what we were going to do. And in this class that I'm taking right now, it's Japanese 412, which it's, I'm sure the numbers are different in any school. But at my school, Portland State, uh, 412 stands for the second term of the fourth year of Japanese. So there's only actually two terms for the fourth year of Japanese that are mandatory. Um, so I'm taking that second term right now. And in, in contrast to the first term, we're instead of reading like from a bunch of different sources and different materials and collecting from all these different like articles from the internet and things like that, we instead are focusing literally on one book, one single book. And when I first heard that, I was so excited because I think that was one of my biggest concerns with the the term prior. Basically, we'd every week we'd read something totally different, but when the week ended, we would just kind of move on and forget. And I never really felt like I needed to remember uh, what I just learned, like for you know until the test comes later. But like at least just to continue going. So I was so excited when I heard that we're going to be doing a single book in that we're going to read it a lot. In, in you know this is my thinking, we're going to read it a lot. We're going to read it over and over. Um, I'm going to be able to uh, learn the kanji, any new words that I don't know, a lot of new grammar points, and I'm going to be rereading it so much that I'm going to just basically have it almost memorized in a sense, but in a good way. Like I'm going to know, I'm going to dissect this book word for word. So I guess essentially what we do is we have a book, it's a short story, it's about 100 pages, and every week we go, we take 10 pages of it, we meet on a Thursday with a Japanese teacher. The whole class is in Japanese only. If you use any English, you get like docked points, you know, and um, which is awesome. And you, we go in and we read the story in Japanese. Uh, we, we have a day prior to kind of um, go through and look at over any of the, con like any of the readings. Cause if, as you're looking at the kanji, you might know what it means, but you might not know how to read it exactly. So you have to do some Google searching and some translating to find um, how to sound them off. So we get that all prepared. And then you go in on a Thursday and you read, read it through together as a class. And any parts that you don't understand, you can ask the teacher. But again, she's explaining it in Japanese. So if you're maybe falling behind or you're at any point um, where you just don't really understand it, it can be a challenge, but it's fun. So you ask, like, for example, just like a, like a grammar point, like, okay, what does, uh, what, well, okay, I can't think of an example, but what does this mean? And she'll just explain it in Japanese. That was a horrible explanation, but sometimes she'll draw something on the board and, or maybe have people kind of act it out so that we kind of like, oh, I see what she's saying. That makes sense. Um, 
So we do that. And then over the weekend, leading up until Tuesday, <clears throat> we are supposed to take that Japanese and any of the Japanese we learned with our Japanese teacher and translate it uh, into English. And when I say that, there's basically like two ways you can go about that, you know. Um, it's not just going word for word and putting that those words on the paper. It's doing that first, I suppose, and then going through and making it sound uh, like real English, making it fluent, making it look as if you were translating this book into an English book as like a, a publisher or something like that. And it's obviously a lot of fun because you're going through slowly and you find a part that you don't really understand and you make a note of it. And if you can't find it, you know, on your own or on the internet or in any of your textbooks, you can ask the teacher. And what's cool is we go in on a Tuesday and now it's all in English. So we've done all the Japanese and all this stuff. And basically any like remaining questions or any remaining uh, things you can now ask in detail in English and we go through it. So I saw the syllabus for this and I'm like, fuck yeah, this is going to be an awesome semester. I'm going to have this shit nailed. I'm going to learn every kanji. I'm going to learn every word. I'm going to, any kanji I don't know, I'm going to write it on a, on a piece of paper and slap it on the wall for the week. And I'm going to know every kanji even related to it. I'm going to know all the particles, all the readings, everything. Um, that obviously didn't last as long as I had hoped. <laughs> In that, I, I personally want to blame the fact that we're going through 10 pages which um, may or may not sound like a lot, but for someone who's learning the language and I guess I'll say this in that um, I would consider my Japanese speaking to be much, much stronger than my reading and writing. Um, any casual everyday stuff, um, like or any casual everyday conversation, if we're using like a messaging app and using kanji on that, I can usually read those and I understand it pretty well. Um, but outside of that, if I go into the city or I have to read, for example, a book, it all, for me, it's just my reading and writing isn't very strong. And I know that. And, um, <clears throat> I, uh, you know, obviously now I think that it complements each other being really good spoken, but not written being really good written and not spoken. If you can merge the two, obviously the idea is that, um, they will benefit each other and you will learn cause I, I am learning so much through these, but it's interesting because a lot of the written Japanese I guess it's similar in English in that it's because it's like formal, it's a little more proper. It might not necessarily be casual Japanese speech that you can actually use in like a casual conversation with your friends. So that, you know, that comes into play as well. But again, I, I, my goal for this semester was really to improve my reading and writing, my speaking and stuff. I'll go back to Japan soon. You know, I always have opportunities to speak and even next term, I don't believe I'm taking any Japanese classes, so I'm going to be taking that time to do a lot of self-studying and really get prepared as I'm leading up to going back to Japan. Um, so I really wanted to focus on my reading and writing. And <clears throat> part of the issue, like I had briefly mentioned, was that due to it being 10 pages, it's just simply, it's too much. And the problem is, is that the amount of time that I'm allotted, you know, to go through slowly and study it and, you know, get it done on time basically means that after I, I'm done going through it one time, like one read through, like, okay, I do this sentence, put it in this sentence, put it in this sentence. I don't really understand it. Leave a little question mark, move on. I go through all that. And then there's a worksheet on top of it. So I fill that out. But I, the amount of time I have to do that, um, you know, a, a healthy amount of time only allows for me to just go through it that one time we go, we go to class, we talk it over and things all make sense, but it's, it hasn't been retaining for me. And I haven't been, <clears throat> understanding everything that I'm learning hundred percent. I don't think at least, um, as much as I would like to. And why I wanted to mention kanji today <clears throat> is, uh, although I think that if we read maybe five pages a week, I think that actually, now that I say that if we did do five pages a week, it would be much better. Uh, there'd be just less vocab to learn, maybe only two or three brand new grammar points that I could easily remember because I can just rethink them over multiple times. If it was only five pages, I think it would be good. But there's the 10 pages, and I think one of the most daunting things was um, when I originally started the semester, like I had said, I had said, okay, any kanji I don't understand, I'm going to make a list, and we're going to learn them all. Uh, that was a little unrealistic. It was a little, it was a little um, too much, and I'm now realizing that. And I think it's okay to accept defeat sometimes. You know, It's okay to know, like, all right, maybe it, this is just a little too much and too fast and too hard for me, and I'm, I'm admitting that now. And I think it's okay. And, you know, I... Um, I'm still working really hard, I think is why it's okay. Is it's not that I'm um, you know, giving up or being lazy or anything. It's just that I literally am like I really underestimated how much this is. And 
what I really specifically have been thinking about lately um, in regards to the kanji is that the kanji can be so daunting sometimes in that I'm, I'm, I go back to my book. So I, I basically print off the book. I have like a PDF version of paper so I can make scratch notes. And then the original book I'm keeping um, untouched, which I think is awesome because later when I'm on the bus, I can go reading through it. And I even have it on like audiobook. So I can go through it and I'm like, oh, I forget how to read that kanji. What was that? I can turn on the audiobook if I want. Um, I could translate it if I want. But I think it's just great having a blank book um, to refer back to and to kind of test myself and review and maybe, you know, see if I can read through this very well. Um, and I think as a result of me at the beginning trying to convince myself that I should go through all the unknown kanji in, in great detail and like slowly go through it. Now that I didn't have the time to do all that because of the 10 pages and just having to meet deadlines, um, I found myself not only not learning the kanji, but not learning any of the new vocab words or possibly even the grammar points as well. The grammar points are easy, easier because there's less, obviously. New words, that you see them all over the place, but they're like, oh, I've never seen that grammar point. You can study it and learn it and highlight it and know what it means from then on. Um, and... So I think because I wanted to learn the new vocab words with the kanji and I was like, all right, well, I didn't have enough time this week. Maybe next week I can catch up and study those kanji. Well, it obviously piles up, it snowballs and it becomes this kind of impossible task, at least within the time frame that I originally had wanted. So I'm regretting that now because now, you know, I'm like halfway through the semester and I'm realizing like, wow, I really haven't learned that many vocab words. And I, I think back to my time studying for the first couple years um this is i'm in fourth year japanese but this is my third year of studying and the first two years were just so fun um for me in that some students you could tell that they study for the tests and when i say that i mean that they they kind of like how i'm studying right now I'm, i get the homework done i study what needs to be done for that week or for the test just to get it done and then when it's done i'm ready for the next one because i have to be i have to be ready for the next 10 pages i have to start doing all these translations and all this stuff and it's i i'm i'm doing the basically the same thing that i did last semester where every week we would just move on and so now i'm kind of excited because i'm like all right here's what i'm gonna do um i'm not gonna let the sake or the fact that i can't study these kanji in time all of them at least because there's just so many that are new uh, in this particular book that I'm reading that rather than let the kanji control what I learn or the pace at which I learn new words and just the story in general, I'm going to kind of forget the kanji for now. I'm going to translate them on the PDF. I'm going to put in the, the hiragana and the katakana or whatever that I need to put in there. So I know how to read it, but I think it's more important. Really. I truly believe this. I think it's more important to know the words. Um, I, I, I think that speaking, is more important than reading, reading and writing. And I hope that doesn't, I hope that doesn't come across as I mean, it's, you don't have to do reading and writing, but again, in my case, my speaking is very, is I would say much stronger than my reading and writing. I know it is. I know for a fact that it is. So when I go to Japan and I have friends and I can make small talk in, in Japanese, that's so much fun for me. And I think rather than know how to read a bunch of kanji and read uh, books and things like that, if I could like right now double the amount of vocab and double the amount of expressions I know I would easily do that over reading and the reason I say that is because I think it's easier to well let's think of it this way let's think of it as you're like a child kind of the Rosetta Stone idea right where which I don't I don't condone Rosetta Stone at all for Japanese I'm gonna say that right now um in that as a kid you can speak a language before you can read and write it so it's kind of the same idea I think if I could speak Japanese kind of at a low level um, and then I see a, a kanji that I don't know, but I know the word. So then I, I, I translate it and I go, that's the word for uso, which means lie in Jap Jap Japanese. That's the kanji for uso. Okay. Okay. I know that now. And because I already know the word, it's much easier to retain. I find I've found. And, um, so I'm making a new rule for myself, possibly a little late, but it's, it's, you know, better late than never. I think with this language learning stuff, and it's a lot of trial and error. It's a lot of feeling out. And it's a lot of, again, it's a lot of adjusting to um, this class this semester is way different than anything I took in my first year, way different than anything I took in Japan. And um, I just kind of have to adapt and accept that. And I, I don't agree with the format entirely. I wish it was slower. I, I'm, I advocate this specifically. I think um, 
going back to what I was saying about the students who study for tests, I would say those students study Japanese at about an 80%, 75% level in that maybe they learn a word and they go, oh, that's what it means. Okay. They write it down, but that they stop there. They don't ask like, wait, what, what if I use this word here? Does that change it? And if it does, you're like, okay, now, you know, all right, well, this word here means something totally different than this word here. And again, I apologize that I don't have, maybe um, when I give these kinds of examples in the future, I'll bring up like some notes to give some exact examples because maybe you're studying something like that and you might learn something. But right now I don't have any, so I apologize for that. I don't have, I don't want to try to conjure up one in my head. Um, but again, I, I, I want to believe I was that student in that I got really excited about knowing something 100%, which I think is why the kanji is kind of dragging me down is that, Say, for example, in a week, it's like we learn like three new phrases or something or like a like a grammar point, like a rule. And because um, that's kind of the first thing you do when you first learn the language is just like the rules of some basic stuff. And there's so much more advanced stuff that even I don't haven't even seen yet. Um, <clears throat> but when I learn it, you know, I there's usually like examples of sentences you can use it in. But but aside from just looking at it and saying, oh, that's what it means. OK ask wait but can i use it like I, I i'm repeating myself here but really ask the teacher like well like if you have a question that comes up like so i can use it in this i can use it in this case i can use it in this case and a lot of times you'll find i think that a lot of um those grammar points have a lot of kind of situations and maybe some rules and that if you use it in this case it means this if you use it in another case it means something kind of different there's little like subtle nuances and things like that I was the student, I, I again, I, I hope it doesn't come across like, yeah, I was the student who studied way better than everyone else. Haha. Uh -huh. Like, I don't want to, I'm not trying to come across as that. All I'm saying is that I know for a fact that I myself um, really prided, my, pr prided myself, is that a word? Prided myself on um, taking that new grammar point and seriously just drilling it to the ground. Like, how, how can I use it here? Can I use it here? Can I use it here? I, in my head, I would like practice it with different vocab words that I just learned to try to like, you know, get my brain uh, just used to it. And uh, so going forward now to the kanji, I, I still want to go at that pace. I want to go so much slower than we are. And I just think that I would learn a lot more. Um, that's my personal opinion. But again, I have to adjust for the class. So I'm, I think for this term, I think it's okay for me to say, um, I'm going to continue to write in the furigana, which is the, uh, basically the hiragana, the other, the easier characters next to the kanji. I'm going to continue to do that. So I know at least how to read it, but more importantly, <clears throat> I'm going to read and memorize, but also understand and try to learn the new vocab words, uh, the grammar word, the grammar points as well. But more importantly, I think right now for me is uh, new words in that the more and more you study a language, the more and more you realize you don't understand the language at all. And there's so many, even just childish baby words that I have no idea how to say them. And going through just any, it could be any book, um, I, I think. It depends, you know, obviously there's variations in how hard it is or things like that. But I think any book you pick up that is a challenge, um, even if the words you're seeing, you're like, man, I might, I don't know if I'll ever hear that. I'll tell you, some of these words I read, I, I'll learn that week. And I'll go and watch something on Netflix in Japanese or something on YouTube later, some news program or something just to, you know, I like to listen to Japanese because I think you should be if you're listening or if you're studying the language, uh, find something you enjoy and, you know, watch something regularly that's in Japanese just to kind of, I apologize. I got a little sore throat here. <coughs> a lot of coughing. Let me get a sip of water here. I'm going to put on some uh, Jeopardy theme. Sorry about that. Man. Ah. Uh. <clears throat> yeah. um lost my train of thought there for a sec but yeah basically i just think um i'm, I'm gonna go through and i really want to slowly go through the words because i think that's more possible basically at the end of a week i might have a page filled with like 20 new words 25 new words that's much much more realistically um tangible <laughs> what's the word like possible in comparison to learning 25 new kanji which might even be kanji that are like at a really high level that I, at my level, I shouldn't really know how to read, write and all that, all that stuff yet. Being able to read is one thing, but being able to like write and do all this stuff, it takes a lot of time and it takes knowing what the particles are, what they mean, which is something I'm still working through. I, I told you I'm, my reading and writing is a little, it's not as strong. Uh, it's a little poor, but I want to get it better. So, but that being said, because my speaking is better, I think for me personally, I'm going to do um, not let the kanji hold me back. I'm going to learn a lot of new words 
And then as I read through it again, I think those words in the kanji and the, the way I see them are going to retain a lot better for me personally. And again, this is from this is my experience and it might be different for you. It might be a totally different ball game, a totally different route that you take. Um, but I, I suppose if I have any like message within all of this, I've mentioned it kind of repeating. I'm kind of, again, I'm a broken record on these things. I apologize, but it's to not study for the test at 80% and just know it like, Oh, in that example, that's what it means. Okay. I would encourage you to go slow, do the snail's pace. Like I do and really try to like pretend that you have to use that word, uh, later that day with your friend. You want to know how it means. You want to know what it means. How can I use it? So ask the teacher like, Hey, like, well, what about this? And they're like, yeah, you can use it that way. Like, that's interesting. Make a note, write it down. And then a couple years later, or maybe even later that year, you'll eventually see the kanji for it. You'll translate it and go, Oh, I already know the word. I know this kanji. Boom. Uh, so yeah, words of advice, study at a hundred percent, uh, for the long term, not at 80%, 75% for the short term for the tests. Um, of course it's all up to what you want to do, but this is my advice in that, um, this week I've made that pact for myself and I'm really excited because after I finish this podcast, I'm going to upload it and get some studying in before bed. But tomorrow's my study day. And after I'm done translating it into English, finishing all the worksheets, I'm going to go back through. And even while I'm on the bus and stuff on the way to school, I'm going to learn the new vocab this week. And so maybe next week I can tune in and let you guys know some new words I learned. Uh, as we, I haven't really done like a word of the day lately and I apologize for that, but uh, I mean, not that it's like a really uh, big staple part of the show or anything, but I think next week I will have some new words, uh, in my roster and I'm really excited. Really. You find things that get you pumped and I find things that the, the things that get me pumped are, yeah, of course, understanding new things and learning them slowly. Um, but I love speaking and I love the vocab words and learning more and how to use them and things like that. So I'm excited to focus on that. And it's just, it's what I've been thinking about lately. And I'm going to stop repeating it because I've said it a million times now, but I really hope that helps. Um, or it, maybe it might be totally different than something you do. And it might just be interesting to hear how someone like myself studies and you might find the exact opposite works for you. Um, do what works for you. Uh, I would, again, just, I, I think going through slowly and, um, yeah really understanding it not i i've said this in the past and i'll i, I want to make it like a slogan don't learn the language know the language <laughs> i think that's how i said it is that is that what it was um yeah so anyways i'm really excited and I, I you can't see it here but my whole desk is just strewn about with all my stuff and um it's it's kind of a nerdy thing to get excited to study but when you're studying a language and you like you know again i kind of i'm biased because i'm planning on hopefully going back there soon um, so I, I want to improve it kind of selfishly in order for myself to be able to, of course, to adapt there, but in order to also crack jokes with friends over some beers, because I think that's when you can comfortably do that in a language, that's just so much fun. When you have those nights where you can like say a joke or say something funny and make other people laugh and you feel comfortable doing it. It's a good feeling. I, I live, I live for that. I think that's some of the best parts of learning the language. So that's my advice for the week. I suppose, uh, don't let kanji hold you back, learn the words. Uh, reading and li reading and writing will come with it, but it will take work. I, I uh, next starting in April, I actually kind of have a new goal. You know, every every like uh, as school terms are ending and a new thing starts, I try to set a goal of what I'm going to learn. And you know, it hasn't really gone to plan, but I did pick up. I, I guess I can show you guys. I picked up a kanji dictionary. Let me grab it. I'll likely make another video in the future, uh, going into more detail on all the books I use. Um, I'd like to get, I'd like to make a more scripted out video for that, but this is something I picked up recently. <laughs> this beast, the new Nelson, uh, Japanese English character dictionary, um, pros and cons for this one. Um, pros are the way that it's structured is it's really old school and that originally I was using just my phone and things like that to study, which is obviously very convenient but it's almost so convenient that you forget a little too easily. I think it's a little too easy to forget what you're learning if you're just using a phone because it's so quick. Um, what this does is you have to do a little prep before you can even begin like, using this thing. So check this out. So these first two pages here, I know it's a little bright. I hope you guys can see that, are the what are known as the particles of Japanese kanji. Or I guess 
let's clarify kanji are from japan and when i say japanese kanji i mostly just mean that it's the kanji in the way that it's read and possibly applied in japan it's the same kanji but the particles themselves um i believe are japanese so even though this is all chinese it's basically breaking apart the commonalities and the common themes that you see within kanji so um for example the symbol that you'll see always for something related to water or ice or something like that is um, i wish i could show you it's basically do 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 it's like three little dashes but anytime you see like a kanji with um those symbols it might not necessarily mean water but that particle on its own means water so the, why is that beneficial well if you know that list has about a, i think it's like a couple hundred if you know all of them, you know what they all mean. And I'll tell you right now, I don't, but I know a few that, you know, get me through the kanji that I do understand. Um, it makes it easier to remember and uh, memorize the writing um, order for kanji and just like the meanings and things like that. In that, if you know all the particles, uh, you look, you don't look at a kanji as a bunch of different scribbles. You look at it as four particles put together. So you're like, oh, okay. So is it particle actually i apologize it's not it's not particle what's the technical word um um i feel really stupid right now jeopardy what is it i think it's written in here let me just look <laughs> um where's where's my record scratch not particles not particles radicals where's my do 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 it's not particles. Particles are like ni, to, uh, ga, wa. Those are particles. Um, radicals. <laughs> Sorry. If you know the radicals for the kanji, uh, if you see a really com complex kanji and it's built, it's got a little house around it, it's got rice in the middle, it's got a floor, and it, it's got fire on the side. That's how you see the kanji. You see it as not just a bunch of chicken scratch. You see four different radicals mashed together. Um, so I bought that textbook because it was really uh, recommended online for that reason. Once you know how to, um, once you know a radical, you use that radical to find what kanji you're looking for in the book. So you like go to that radical section and then you scroll through and I'm still kind of learning it. So I can't even really explain it. It's pretty difficult, but I'm excited because I think especially uh, I'm planning in April. That's going to be my like um, kanji grind time as well as obviously new words and things like that. But Kanji is really going to be a big priority for me the months leading up to Japan uh, starting in April. So I'm going to basically be starting from scratch, make, reviewing all the ones that I've already learned and know and know how to read. But sometimes you forget how to write kanji. You'd be surprised. Uh, I can read a lot of kanji um, that, again, are in like everyday conversation. And I can't. Sometimes it's just like, all right, write it. And I'm like, oh, God, you just can't. But it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of you see that image and you just you remember the image. But. Once you know all of the uh, radicals, it makes it much easier because you're like, okay, now this radical, now this radical. It's still hard as hell. Don't get me wrong. There's no easy way to learn kanji. Um, it's just trying to find ways that work for you. And I think this is going to be a good challenge. Um, cons to the dictionary, obviously, it takes time and things like that. If you don't, if you're not that advanced or don't want to learn that advanced, there's there's plenty of other textbooks you can get. Um, and this is just a dictionary. But the re the one of the cons and um, drawbacks of it being a dictionary is that because there's so many uh, kanji covered in it, it's not very detailed uh, per, per one, which is uh, a little bit sad. I apologize. I'm so bad. I am the worst sound effects like guy, and I have I always want to use them, and I never... Here we go. Oh, it's just a little bit... Too, I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> these are so... I'm just going to stop using these. But um, anyways, yeah, so it's, it's not very detailed. So that's one of the drawbacks is people say like, well, it has all the kanji, but there's so many... And some that you might not even need that, you know, you might want something that has a little bit more examples. But there's applications. I have a, an app on my phone called Kanji Study where if I want, like, example sentences and example phrases and keywords and the draw order, I can punch it in on an app on my phone. It'll show me all of that in a list. So I think it'll be cool to, like, learn a kanji in the dictionary, figure out how to look it up, draw it a bunch, like, just figure it out, and then go into my app and, like, see how I can apply it. And that's how I'm going to be going in April. I don't know, like, the rate at which I'm going to do that. Maybe, like, a cut, like at first, the review kanji, I'll do, like, five or ten a day. <laughs> a day, I don't know. We'll see. But Or maybe a week, you know. And then as it, like, gets to the harder ones, you know, nailing, like, a solid. It sounds like a little, but it, learning kanji can be really hard sometimes. It's, like, every week with self-study, learning three or four new kanji very well. Like, very hard. 
writing it. My my new room. I'm moving into a, a a room next month with a friend of mine. I'm excited to show that. It's gonna be a little wild. It's a share house with like six other guys, but they all go to uh, the medical school here in Portland. It's called OHSU. And um, I'm going to be moving in there for just three months to finish out school because my lease here uh, ends in just a couple weeks. So I have to get out of here. And until I graduate, I'm going to be living there. And it's going to be kind of crazy, but I have my own room. It is small, but uh, the walls are covered in whiteboards. Uh, for some reason, the way the, the room is left, it's just left in whiteboards. So I'm going to be able to make all kinds of notes, uh, draw kanji. I'm going to write it on paper and slap it in, like, you know, uh, on the roof so that when I'm like sleeping, I can see it. I'm going to nail three or four kanji per week, which I know is slow. It's a slow pace, but if it's better than doing zero, which is what I'm doing right now. So I'm excited to start a realistic goal um, and a healthy one. And I'm, I'm more stoked on new vocab words than kanji right now. So for now I'm doing all vocab and it's going to be fun. I can't wait. So I hope you guys are, uh, if you guys are studying as well, Let's learn some new vocab words together. Let's practice and just like learn a bunch of stuff. I can't wait. It's just fun. I get I get giddy on this shit, this shit. So I know I know not for everyone they get this excited, but it's 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 a lot of fun for me. So um, I'm excited, and that's what I've been thinking about all week. So I just wanted to share that, and uh, looking forward to making progress at a slower pace once this semester is over because I am dying. <coughs> all right. I would like to go uh, veer away, I guess, from that because that's kind of my whole spiel on that. Um, to read some user comments, I love to have you guys come into these uh, podcasts that get slow, or, you know, not so many views. So I read all the I read all the comments on my channel, by the way. Any videos, even the biggest videos that I have, I have a few that have had have a lot more success than others, which is you know totally normal. I read all of the comments. So. Um, especially on these podcasts where the comments are a lot less in number than maybe some other videos. Um, I get a chance to read them all and I like to pull them up and answer them here. So let me shut up and get going. Um, so first comment was from a few days ago from jbird563 says, Hey Eric, I'm curious to know which book you're translating in your Japanese class. Great video and sound effects. Thanks jbird. Hopefully I can use these sound effects a little bit better in the future as I learn how to do this yeah the book that i'm reading actually that's a good question i should have mentioned the book i don't know why i've been talking about this book in translating um and i haven't mentioned which book it is um i'll say this i'm not necessarily like recommending this not saying it's bad but like um, there might be more interesting books that you might find more interesting than this because it's um although i'm learning a lot of new grammar well okay if I go through this slowly, I'll know a lot of new grammar, a lot of new kanji, and a lot of new vocab words if I knew this book 100%. It's only 100 pages. It's actually a two-part. There's two stories. But the book is called... So this is in Japanese. It's called Hard Boiled. I don't even know if you can see. I apologize. My camera is a little bright. So it's Hado Boiled. boiled bo I can't even say it. Hado Boiled. Boil, boil, it's Hard Boiled. I, that's, that's really embarrassing that I can't say it. It's the Boiled. Boiled. There we go. We got it. The R's, obviously, and the L's and stuff are so different from English and Japanese that the R's still trip me up a lot. And um, so, Hadoboirudo. Got it. Hard Boiled by uh, Yoshimoto Banana. <laughs> so, if you read the kanji, this is Yoshi. This is like tree, but it can be read as moto. So, it, whenever in a name, it's I think it's always read as moto. And then her name is Banana. Like, it's her pen name. She she named it to literally just says banana. So I don't really know what that is about. Um, apparently, she's a pretty... I can't... I don't know a lot about her. I didn't research her. I apologize. But um, I believe she's a pretty famous writer from, like, the 80s. And this book is definitely a little older. I think it's def I think it's based in the 90s. When was this written? I'm not going to look it up right now. I'm, you know, waste time. But, yeah, I don't know. But they talk about, like, pagers and stuff in here. So I think that's why it's from the 90s. But... Um, it's essentially, uh, without spoiling anything, it's about, it's like the story of a woman who is a lesbian, or at least she had the, she had one experience dating a girl. Um, and well, if I go any further, it spoils stuff, but the girl has, they're no longer dating. And the, this girl's basically like reflecting on that. And she ends up going on a trip in order to kind of reflect on it. And she gets lost and ends up in this weird town. And that's the story. The story like has a lot of foreshadowing and going back and all this stuff. 
it's pretty advanced it's pretty hard and it's pretty challenging for me and uh, apparently for japanese it's pretty you know low level reading but that's for a japanese person for me this is quite advanced and um i guess if there's any reason i could recommend it is that it's only like in a, english or english in american money it's only about ten dollars uh in japan it's 457 yen plus tax which is like five dollars so it's 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 paperback you if you rip it you could buy a new one um and yeah again I, so in our class it's nice because our teacher uh pulled up all of the pdf files i wish i could share those as well but um unfortunately the class just like gives them out so i just have the pdfs of the book but again maybe you could buy like two copies and in one of them you write down the notes and then in the other one you read it blank however you'd like to do it um but this is the book if you're interested in getting that um it's it's not bad i find it but i'm i'm less interested in the story and i'm more interested in the uh the new words and grammar and all things like that. I'm not really concerned. It could be any story. I don't really care. I'm just interested in dissecting it and learning new stuff from it. So good question though, because I should have mentioned that earlier. Um, moving on. Grim Bubbles uh, asks, um, okay, so this person is asking in relation to studying abroad and uh, living in a homestay as opposed to like the dorms. So in one of my podcasts, I was discussing that. So I think that's what this question is referring to. If you ask to leave a homestay, like if you weren't learning Japanese, do you have to go back to the dorm or can they put you into a better homestay? Well, I'm going to ask a follow-up question. So if you aren't learning Japanese, why are you doing a homestay? I guess is my first question. I, I hope that doesn't sound rude. I don't want that to sound rude. I just mean that like that's usually the point of a homestay is to live – I mean – you could live with a family who speaks English, but they usually expect you to be learning the language. That's kind of the idea. At least that, like, my vision of... I just don't see why you would do a homestay unless you were only going for, like, two weeks, of course. Like, if you're going on a trip and someone's willing to house you, that could be a way better experience than just doing a hotel because you're just, you know, you can try new foods with them and they can tell stories and things like that. Um, and, you know, share... They'll, 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 they'll teach you some Japanese even if you're not learning it. Um... So I guess my question to you, yeah, is uh, why why would you do a homestay without learning Japanese? Uh, again, if it's only two weeks, go for it. But I would encourage you to do the homestay if you're doing Japanese. But to answer your actual question, if you decided to leave the homestay <clears throat> and try to get a better one, I don't think that they at least okay. I can only speak from my experience, but if I had wanted to leave my homestay, luckily mine was great. I loved it. Um, I don't, yes, I would have been forced to go back to the dorm, which I was my biggest fear. I didn't want to go there. I didn't want to speak English with other foreigners. I can do that every day here in America. I wanted to be immersed into as much, immersed, immersed into Japan as much as possible. And for me, that meant not living with other English speaking Americans. So my, I, I was seriously like afraid of being put in the dorm because my homestay wasn't even guaranteed at the time. And when they confirmed that I had it, I ju I went crazy. So Yes, they would put me. They would have put me in the dorm if I quit. So to answer your question, yeah, I think if you leave, they'd put you back in the the dorm. But if you were staying for two like semesters or two different like terms, um, they could likely find you another one the next term. But when you use the word better homestay, again, it's all up to chance. There's not really a much you can do other than saying like, do you mind if they smoke cigarettes? Do you mind if there's kids or pets? That's really the only like. Uh, filtering you can kind of do um you 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 don't get to like look at three different homestays and pick like oh that's the best one i'll do that no they they put you into one so i know it's not the best answer because luckily for me i lucked out and i did the same homestay for both semesters because i like them a lot um i didn't have to go through any of that i knew some people who did leave their homestays and got put in the dorms and they were sad but it was just kind of the reality of it i'm glad i didn't have to but again it is very up to chance so that's that's something you're going to have to just kind of uh, ask yourself, I guess. Are you willing to take the risk? But you can always leave the homestay. I, at least in my case, you could. If you if worst comes to worst, you go back to the dorm. <clears throat> I suppose you could get an apartment if you had the money. Um, but, yeah, you, you, you don't get to just like, oh, I'd like a better one. You, that's not going to happen, uh, unfortunately. So I hope that helps. Final question, I guess I will do before we wrap up today's podcast. Thank you, thank you guys, by the way, for tuning in. You, I, I really appreciate uh, people who, you know, like, subscribe, and especially comment below, and like are getting really involved with like all the social media. So just thank you guys. Um, Lucian Altraba uh, mentioned said, "You mentioned that the salary isn't the best in Japan 
if you don't have a master's degree. This person is referring to uh, teaching English. <clears throat> but what does having a master's help with when it comes to teaching English? Oh, so I'll read it again. You mentioned that the salary isn't best if you don't have a master's degree. But what does having a master's... So I'm like, I'm like translating it because just because the way it's written. But what does having a master's degree help... How does it help when it comes to teaching English? Well, I guess my answer is actually pretty simple on that. Um, if you have a master's degree in uh, linguistics or maybe in English itself or whatever applies to English teaching, if you have a master's in it, um, you are then able to teach not as an English teacher in high schools, junior high, and anything below that, you're now able to work as a professor in a university and possibly also maybe like a, like a business uh, situation, like working in a company. There's a lot of companies that will hire um, an English teacher or professor to, you know, help their staff get better at, with their English listening and speaking skills, uh, reading and writing probably as well, but mostly I think speaking. Um, so yes, pretty short answer actually. Having a master's allows you to work as a professor in a university and you'll make much more money, have much better benefits, retirement, all that jazz. That's a career. Uh, the path I suppose I'm leading toward right now is I don't, I don't have a master's degree in my immediate future. I may pursue one after a few years, like go to Japan, teach for a bit. And if I'm like, all right, I'd like to do this as a career and make real money. I could go back and get a master's, but it's also possible. It's not impossible. Um, it is very possible to still live in Japan. Um, and teach below that level and especially if you have maybe like a boyfriend a girlfriend you're married then you're sharing an income and you're working that way um, but especially if you're single you can definitely survive on uh, not having a master's degree but it is a job it's not a career I again I'm speaking from a guy who's just been um, researching and studying and uh, asking other people and picking their brains so I, I haven't really gone through this through this experience 100% on my own yet. Um, but I think I have a pretty good idea of what it is. And if, if there is any like suggestions that you guys have co having comments, um, or have in the comments, please leave like a suggestion that, uh, may apply if you know what I'm saying, isn't necessarily a hundred percent, you know, the thing, but in my, in if what, from what I've seen, if you don't have a master's, you can live in Japan, um, you know, for a few years, I guess you could technically just live there on, but you're not going to have very much money. You're not going to be shopping at, you're not going to be shopping at Nike. So my, my shopping sprees are probably over for a little while. I have to start paying back school loans. Um, hoping to pay that off, uh, in under five years, but those are going to be some long years of not having very much money. And after around that time, you know, after like paying off school and evaluating and, um, what it's like living in Japan for a few years and obviously doing YouTube with you guys, um, I'm going to reevaluate getting a master's degree because you can do it in Japan. And I think, um, I think it, it could be possible for me to like work for three years, pay off school, you know, or three or four years, whatever, and then do master's degree, uh, put, you know, that, or, you know, working on the side, hopefully I can save enough, save up enough money that I can make it happen. We'll see. That's going to be in the future, but that's my, sh that's my actually long answer to what should be a short answer to your question is just get a master's degree. If you want to pursue it as a career, if you, if you know, you want to do that. Um, again, I, I'm kind of using English teaching as my entry into Japan. Of course, I'm excited. I think it'll be a lot of fun. I could, I could see myself. Um, I love kids, so I, I could see myself um, teaching English in the future. But do I see myself doing it um, for not very much pay for the rest of my life? That I'm not so sure of. I would, I would like to make money if I can. Um, but for my first goal, my main goal is just to kind of get into Japan and try it out and get my feet wet. So. We're going to be doing that, and uh, I guess over the few next couple of years, you guys will find out. I'll let you know uh, if I end up doing master stuff, and that'll be fun to talk about later on as well through that experience. But um, I think that'll about wrap up today's podcast. Thank you guys again for listening and tuning in, um, and thanks to everyone who provided questions. Those are actually you know really helpful. I hope that these questions help other people who are interested in going to Japan for any reason. Um, and again, yeah. Uh, don't let kanji or anything that's too difficult uh, slow you down from continuing to make progress in your studying at a slow pace that's comfortable for you um, where you're learning 100% of that word. And you may have to come back a year later and review it, but if you take notes and you write it down and say like, okay, this makes sense, 
write down a few example que uh what i like to do this is a side note if i learn a new word or a new like grammar point where it's like like a phrase or something um i'll write one or two example sentences right under that if they're like very different just so that like you know maybe years down the line or a month later um i'm like on the plane or i'm riding the bus i'm like oh yeah what was that like i want to review that 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 one phrase you can go back and you have a you have without a doubt the meaning because you wrote down an example uh, sentence so you know how it can be used and it's just I think it's a great way to do it so again it takes time but going slow and getting it a hundred percent nailed I think is awesome and it just it's it's I think it's a much more fun way to learn because later years down the road those guys that studied at 75% uh, just to pass the test they're gonna make some mistakes uh, that you're gonna pick up on and you can kind of think in your head like oh they messed up but I know the I know how to really say that, and I, I'm not speaking like I can you know do that really yet. But you you know what I mean. That's kind of the idea. That's the mindset. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, please like and comment down below. Also, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. I uh, appreciate any subscribers I can get. Um, and of course, I ha I have uh, Twitter, Instagram, SoundCloud, and Snapchat all going for Eric Abroad. Um, Eric Abroad is the Snapchat, and the rest are they're actually my personal accounts under Emart seven five six. Um, hopefully I don't change those in the future for confusion, but sometimes I wish I, I don't know. What do you guys think? If I made like new accounts for Twitter, uh, and Snapchat and stuff, I just feel like that'd be counterproductive in that I've posted my stuff so much up until now. Um, but the channel is still really small, you know, in relative to like big YouTubers, I think it's like, we still have a chance and an opportunity to just start fresh and I could change and put little annotations and all the other. What do you guys think? Would that be too much of a hassle? Um, Cause I'd hate, you know, to like have people who were subscribed to my main thing miss out if I'm on the new one and they don't realize it. So let me know, actually let me know. Cause I've been considering that as well. Um, and I, I really, I'm actually not sure how I'm going to do it for now. I'm just going to stay, but maybe like when I hit 20,000, it's like, all right, new announcement. I have new, whatever. All right. I'm going to end it. Thank you guys. Have a happy Monday. Have a happy week. Um, I hope you, uh, I wish you good luck in anything you're doing in work or with studying, uh, Japanese hopefully. And, um, also, I'm going to give a shout out to anyone who's like Japanese listening to this. Kite mitte kuriteru ano nihonji mo arigatou gozaimasu. Ano, zehi ano komento toka, ano shitsumon toka atara komento no section ni ano posto shite kudasai. Posto shite komento shite kudasai toka. Arigatou gozaimasu. Honto ni itsu mo toroku suru hito e? Mo nanka arigatou gozaimasu? Nanka ureshii desu boku wa nanka saikin ano toroku suru hito ga agatte te. 嬉しいですよ。えー、聞いて、見てくれて、あざっす。<笑>じゃあ、では、All right. Thank you guys for listening.、Uh, I'll see you guys next week. And、uh, hopefully, when I you know, get some time here, I'm going to be working on my main videos as well. But again,、uh, trying to just focus on school, trying to focus on studying Japanese. So I hope you guys hang in there. I'll have more entertaining videos in the future. But for now, you can expect a weekly podcast for the foreseeable future. And in four weeks, I'll be back in Japan. More details on that later、uh, for some live video stuff on all my social media shit. And I'm excited to share it with you guys. Have a great week, and I'll see you next time. Ja, mata.